Blender is an incredibly powerful tool. You can make entire films, build stunning 3D landscapes, model game assets, and the best part is it's 100% free to use. But because Blender can do so much, it looks incredibly confusing to a newcomer. The interface, the shortcuts, the 3D viewport, it can all feel very intimidating. So this free and complete course is designed specifically for the absolute beginner. There's no prior experience needed at all. I'll break down the fundamentals into simple, easy and methodical steps so you can quickly access this amazing tool. And by the end of this series of videos, you won't just learn the tools, you'll have created this entire fun scene right here. And we'll start with this video, learning the interface. Before we start, if you like what I do, then do check out the links in the description to lots of other YouTube playlists similar to this and my more in-depth courses. So let's get started learning the Blender interface. So before we start, you'll want to download Blender, of course. So go to blender.org. You should see the latest version just in front of you here. I'm using Blender 5. Do check the links in the description for any updates to this video if there's later versions with changes. You can click on the button here, download Blender 5, follow the on-screen instructions, and you're ready to go. This is probably the first thing you'll see. You may see something about the control settings. If so, just set everything as default, then you should be taken to this screen. You've got different new file types down the left-hand side here, recent files just here. You've also got recover last session, which can be quite useful if there is a crash. And we're going to start with the general file just here. If I actually click away from this screen, it will take you into the general file. Now I've got an add-on that displays my screencast keys. So you'll see them down the right-hand corner here. And let's now take you through the interface and moving around the scene. The middle window here is the 3D viewport. We've got a separate window over to the side here, which is the outliner, and that labels all the different things in the scene. And then we've got a properties panel next to that, which gives us lots of different options and the ability to change our objects. And down the very bottom here, we have what's called a timeline. That's if we're doing animation. So we don't need to worry too much about that one at the moment. Now, moving around the 3D scene, the ideal is to have a three button mouse. That way, if I use the wheel of my mouse, I can zoom in and out. If I press the middle mouse button and move left to right or up and down, I can rotate around an arbitrary point in the middle of my scene. And if I hold down shift and middle mouse button, I can strafe side to side. Now, if you haven't got a three button mouse, I would suggest getting one for Blender, but you can go up to edit, preferences, under input, there's an option here, emulate three button mouse. And if you select that and emulate it by pressing alt and then left mouse button, that will do the same thing as the middle mouse button. So alt left click will move you around the scene, for example, and shift alt left click will strafe side to side. There's also an option to emulate numpad. A numpad is very useful. So if you haven't got a numpad, you might want to select that. However, that can slightly interfere with some of the keyboard shortcuts in other places. So just be aware of that. And you might want to look up the differences if you are having to emulate your numpad. But for the most part, I'll try and do these things without a numpad to show you that there's usually an option, even though the shortcut is on the numpad. So I'll close this down for now. Now at the top right here, we have got those move buttons as well. If I click on the hand here, I can move around. If I click on the magnifying glass, I can zoom in and out. And there's a couple of buttons underneath that. The camera is to go into camera view, and this is what you will see when you render out your scenes and turn them into either stills or movies. And you can click on the camera again to come out of camera view. And there's a button underneath this as well, which is perspective and orthographic. That can be a bit confusing to get your head around to start off with, but this is the scene without perspective. And when I click this button again, I get the scene with perspective, which is much easier to understand. When I hover over certain options, it does tell you the shortcut key. And in this case, it's numpad five. So that's where we can use our numpad or we can use the button here. The other use of the numpad is to jump to different views. So you can see my Cartesian coordinates up the top here. If I click on the X and the one that's actually labeled X there, that will take me to side view looking at my cube. Minus Y will take me to front view. And you can see when I hover over that there are keyboard shortcuts for these as well. And then there's Z, which is the top view. And I can just press middle mouse button to come out of that view into perspective view again. A quick note that these views are in orthographic. That's much easier for placing objects because you can really see the grid there. Whereas middle mouse button into perspective view is much easier for visualizing things. So I tend to go to side view, front view and top view when I'm placing objects, but perspective view just here, which I can move around with middle mouse button, that's for seeing what my scene's really looking like. So let's actually look at the objects. At the moment, we've got three in our scene. I mentioned the camera earlier, that's up here. And remember that's zero on the numpad. And again, zero to come out of the camera view, or you can press the camera icon just there. There's the light up the top here. We can't see any influence of the light yet, but I'll talk about that later. And then the cube just here. And you can left click to select these objects. 
You can also, whilst you've got this tool enabled, the select box enabled, you can box select objects by drawing a box over all of them and selecting them that way. And you can see in the outliner on the side here that they're all highlighted now. One is highlighted in yellow and that's the active object. Again, we'll talk about that a bit later. If I want to deselect these objects, I can just left click on a blank part of my screen and that deselects everything. So how do we add objects? Well, there's an add menu up the top here. Shift A is the shortcut for that, and it's really good to get used to the keyboard shortcuts, then you can work much faster. If I press on the Add menu, to start off with, you'll want to add the meshes, and later on we'll be adding some lights. The other ones are a little bit more advanced, and you can go onto some of my slightly more advanced playlists for those. But we'll start with meshes. Let's go down the mesh menu to the UV sphere. Now straight away, you'll notice that it's inside my cube. It actually adds it, if I zoom in with the wheel of my mouse, it adds it right in the center of my scene where my 3D cursor is just there. And you can move the 3D cursor with shift right click and you can see I'm moving that around. It tends to snap to objects. So if I move my 3D cursor there, you'll see it's actually on the cube just there. And if I move it to the top, it's on the cube just there. And if I add an object now, it will be added where the 3D cursor is. But currently my sphere is inside my cube. So we need to learn how to move these objects around. Incidentally, if you do have an object inside another one, and let's say I wanted to select that, I'm going to select the outside one, which is the cube. But if I alt click, it will say, which one of the ones do you want to select? So alt is kind of a way to see through objects and I can select my sphere that way. If I press G to grab, I can move my sphere around and it moves perpendicular to the viewport camera. So if I left click to set it in place there, and move around here and press G to grab, you can see again, it's moving perpendicular to the viewport camera and I'll left click to set it in place. I'll undo that movement though with Control Z and I'll press G to grab, but this time I'll press the Y axis straight afterwards, move it across and see it constrains to the Y if I press the Y key, and then I can left click to put that into position there. The same is true for G then X, that'll move it in the X axis, and G then Z in the Z axis. Now incidentally, it's worth pointing out that front view is generally considered over here. Now the only way I'm able to tell that is because of the Cartesian coordinates up here. Where it's labeled with a letter, that's the positive axis, and where it's not labeled, and I have to hover over, those are the negative. So negative Y is actually coming towards us, positive Y is going away from us. So let's go to top view by clicking on the Z there and pressing G to grab and moving that sphere next to my cube just there. And you can see why the orthographic views can be quite useful because it moves perpendicular to my camera, it's not moving in the Z axis and I can position it in line nice and easily with my cube just there. And then I can go into perspective to see what it looks like. So that's the move tool. If I click on the cube again and press R to rotate, you can see that that's the rotate key or shortcut. And again, it rotates perpendicular to the camera. Now, because I haven't pressed left click, I can press X to constrain that rotation to the X axis, Y or Z, and I can constrain it to those different axes. If I right click, that will cancel any of that rotation and put it back where it was. If I press S to scale, that scales things up and down. And again, S then Y will scale in the Y, X and Z. And again, right click cancels that transform or that scaling in that case. Now over on the left hand side, I mentioned the select box and that's the best one to keep it on just here. If I click and hold, there are different options for select, but the select box is the most easiest and obvious. Underneath that, we've got the 3D cursor so I can move around my 3D cursor by using that tool, but I'll go back to my select box. We've also got some move tools as well. And if I click on the move tool, you can see I've got a gizmo here. This can often be useful for beginners, but I actually never use this because I find it's quite slow and sluggish. It's much better to just press G than Y to move it along the Y axis or G to move it perpendicular to the camera. So I generally steer clear of these tools just along here. So I'll go back to my select box. And lastly, if I select both these objects, I can control box select to deselect an object. Okay, so a quick challenge to you then is to add all the other mesh objects apart from the plane, the circle, and the grid. Add all the other objects and put them in a line along the x-axis. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you got an okay with that. If I go up to the add menu, mesh, and then icosphere is the next one on the list. You can see it adds where my 3D cursor is. So I can go to top view. So click on the Z axis there, G to grab and move it again along the X axis here. This time I'm going to press Shift A to add, which is the shortcut mesh and then cylinder. Again, G to grab, I'll move that this side this time and I'll speed up for the other objects. 
The monkey is always a fun one because it looks like you've made something really interesting. Okay, time for a new challenge. This time I want you to add the mesh object plane and you're going to use that as your floor and you're going to position all your objects on top of that floor. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I press Shift A to add, mesh and then plane. I'll scale that up with S so it's nice and big. And then I need to move all my objects on top of the floor. So the best way to do that is to go to front view. So that's minus Y here or one on my numpad. We can see the plane going across the middle there because it's selected. But if I select my other objects, suddenly we can't see the plane and that gets a bit awkward. But if I move these, G then Z, on top of the grid like this, and just reposition these ones, which are slightly out. Then I can come back into perspective view, select the plane, and again, go to front view and move that to the same level as my X axis here, which is the world origin just in the middle there. So there I have all my objects on the floor. Okay, as a new challenge, I want you to take the cylinder and rotate it so it's lying on the floor. And the monkey, I want you to rotate it so it's kind of sitting on the floor with the back of its head and the front of its chin resting against the floor. Don't worry if it's overlapping the floor very slightly. Just try and get it as close as possible. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so if I select the cylinder, I can go to side view and I can rotate it round till it's lying on the floor. Now, when you press R, you can actually type in the degrees that you want it to rotate. So I'm in side view and I've pressed R. If I press 90 now, that will go exactly 90 degrees and I can press enter. And it's rotating around the X axis because I'm in side view. So that's side view here, which is numpad three. So that should be sitting on its side on the floor. That's great. So what about the monkey? Well, again, I want to go to side view, but it's a little bit tricky if I choose the positive X. So it makes sense to choose the negative X for this one. And I'll zoom in. If for some reason your monkey is behind another object, you can use this mode here, which is called X-ray mode. But in my case, it's actually more helpful to turn that off because I can easily see the outline. So I can rotate this and this is a bit more arbitrary about there and then G to grab to move it to the floor. And I've got all my objects in a line like so. So hopefully you've gotten okay with that. One last challenge is to select the cube and scale it so it's scaling a bit bigger, maybe twice as big or three times as big in the Y axis. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I select my cube. I'll just come around to the side so we can see it more easily. Scale Y, and I could actually type in three here and it will scale three times, and then I'll press enter. Don't worry if you did it by hand and roughly got three times as long or two times as long, that's absolutely fine, that will work too. So that takes us through most of the important parts of the interface, and hopefully you feel like you have more of an understanding of those. If you do have any questions, then do comment below. I do read all the comments. In the next episode, we'll look at materials. Do make sure you've checked the links in the description for any updates and links to other playlists on this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.